G'day, Steve from OffTheGridNoz.com again. A small video this time on fuel reliance. A lot of times we hear about people with backup generators and yes we from experience have been down the road of running for many years, six, seven years with the reliance on a generator. Well I'm going to walk you around the property now and show you our latest take on this. Now we only use three kilowatt which is the panels up there. Three kilowatt right not ten kilowatt no million dollar system just three lousy kilowatt we do not do generator backups I'm going to wander in here through my messy shed and focus on this for a second we use a relatively simple fairly economical system cost about eight thousand dollars to put our system in that's the actual control unit inverter and all the business I put in myself took a little bit of effort the control board was manufactured by a, a company called uh, energy connections they're in Victoria there are companies around to make these control boards up it's connected to the battery bank down there battery banks only a thousand amp hour but we do not run generators for seven months now with this new system panning around my shed we do not run a generator for any reason the three kilowatt provides everything we need now, as far as backup goes well we do as you can see there we have an instantaneous hot water service it is LPG fired by one bottle so yeah I mean whilst things are honky dory as I walk around excuse the camera bouncing whilst things are honky dory it's all very well to have LPG, LPG is a great fuel. Walking into the little house, <clears throat> running the camera is a bit of a drag whilst you're walking around. But even in the little house, we have nice little wood fire, very cheap, cast iron, works well, heats this place up beautifully. And yes, in the little house, we have the dreaded hot plates. Now, the hot plates, fine, whilst we've got gas anyone that was living in here a family member or ourselves we lived in here for quite a few months the hot plates are great but worst case scenario that little wood fire has a hot plate on top and it will allow us to cook so we have no permanent reliance on the lpg in other words even our little house is set up for an alternative it's powered all the lights you can see the little oh, i can show the lights Oh dear, how's that for blurry? No, can't pick it up. No, forget that. I was going to show you the lights. You know what an LED light looks like. We use 12 volt LED going back outside. So yes, we have a heating and a cooking requirement built in as backup. Walking outside again. Forget the bouncing. <clears throat> Pretty bright today little tiny battery one 200 amp hour battery provides lighting and over the back of the rubbish bins here I can show you little diaphragm pump that little diaphragm pump is only 12 volt it runs off that battery and runs the lighting without any problems all powered by one 200 watt panel that's up on the roof of the little house so that's the little house she can be standalone meaning if the propane runs out the house will still be heated and we still have will we'll have the cooker as far as the wood stove goes so yes it's great to have a instantaneous hot water service when it's all working nicely and the system's all working nicely but that little house does not require a generator backup at all moving around and i showed you the kitchen before but i'm going to walk down there again really hard holding the damn camera actually while you're walking around probably not a bit not a good plan but never mind now excuse the mess down in the kitchen we have lots of things we have the fridge there runs off the main two 240 three kilowatt system never a problem again doesn't cause a generator issue we've got hot and cold water that can be run from the LPG or from the other system that I'm going to show you in a little while but it also has a backup so the water will always run out of that tap whether we have 
a generator running or whether we have an LPG heater, we will always have hot and cold water out of that tap. Yes, we have the obligatory barbecue, LPG barbecue. That I can't do much about, that is a LPG barbecue, so that's just the way it goes. Panning around though, what we have is a really good wood stove. This has got great hot plates on top. It's got an oven. Really nice wood box, uh, wood fire box. Really good to control. It's a really good backup. Now that provides what we would need to run even things like the water <laughs> distillation still. We can always put that pot on the wood stove. We don't need the gas burner that's underneath. That's a gas burner and that's all very well while we get LPG but that goes away we revert to the wood now the wood will cook our our meals it will heat up my still it will turn around and even replace the LPG fired pizza oven so there is backup built in again as I pointed out before we have up there little 12 volt system it only runs on one 200 amp hour battery Powers all the LED lights up, which are up here somewhere. There they are, LED lights. The whole kitchen is illuminated with eight LED lights. They use very little wattage. They're not relying on the three three kilowatt system. But moving around to the back of the house, uh, this walking with the camera is probably going to cause me a damage if I trip over. Never mind. Around the back of the house. This is the latest. What we're doing with everything is we're going to hook it into this wood fired. It's a little wood fired boiler. It can be connected and it's in the process of. The flue isn't done. And I'll get in the shade. But you can see the instantaneous. The house is actually on LPG for heating, for hot water heating, sorry. But a very small amount of plumbing and I can hook the wood fire in to actually augment and take over from the LPG if necessary. So yeah, look, even the house has a, a backup system, meaning we don't rely on LPG, we use it while it's available, and that's fine, but we don't rely on it completely. This will be hooked in very shortly, and that will provide the hot water for showers, the kitchen, and everything else quite adequately and we will just turn this bugger off if there's no LPG supply. Now I'm going to go inside the house. We're probably going to run into Kerry here. Going through the house, going through the house. There's Kerry. Kerry's watching YouTube because we don't watch TV. Say hi Kerry. Hello. <laughs> right, inside the house. Oh, you can turn it off if you like. Inside the house we only rely on wood heating, wood heating via that one wood heater. But that wood heater has hot plates on top, which means we're not reliant on which is around here into what I have referred to as a luxury kitchen. This is not luxury. This is just a kitchen that's very functional, it's very clean, it's got lots of space, it's quite pleasant to be in, it's got lots of open windows. But what it has got around here is the dreaded hot plates yes now the hot plates are lpg fired and obviously if lpg dies and we have no lpg oh damn well we could go over there and use the top of the main wood fire or we have this little bugger here which is a wood fired combustion stove again it has no flue and that's because we're still going through the process of actually hooking that up we're in the middle of summer, so on a 30, 30 degree day, the fire isn't really important, the cooking fire, and we have LPG. So this kitchen has LPG as its main use at the moment. Shit, it's a fan, we swap to wood fire. We have wood fire to heat the house and cook our food on. And over there in the lounge room, we have the backup wood fire. We can cook, if we have to, we can cook on it, whatever. So we have two different fuel sources we're not reliant on it again the kitchen has all the mod cons it's got the hot and cold running water which will be at the moment as it is fired up on LPG but if we hook and when we hook the wood fire in it will be provided by the wood fire 
So the bottom line is here, we only have three kilowatt, we do not, and we watch all too many videos, and Kerry may chime in, she may not, but that's looking at the outdoor kitchen, we actually stare at that through a bay window, which was very cheap to build. It's not a million dollar house by any stretch, but it's very comfortable and very pleasant. What we have is a, a system now, unlike the first six or seven years off grid, we do not run. I've got three generators out there, and we don't run them anymore. I haven't run them for six months, and we have power to burn. It may take a modification in what you, what you think you need, or what you think you've been using, but as I showed you in one of my other videos, we even run evap cooling. Here we go, there's a grill up there. We run full blown evap cooling through the whole building. And it runs off 3 kilowatt, not a problem, and we'll run overnight. So there you go. You need to think that you need 10 kilowatts. Well, 10 kilowatts isn't required. We do all of this off 3 kilowatt. We do standalone lights. You can see the lights up there. 12 volt lights on a separate system and I'll wander out the back again say see you later Kerry Bye. yeah you probably won't hear that but yes that's all right pretty bright throw about the flare here's our little office area computer area we've got a couple of computers these are running all the time again no generator we don't run a generator but we, we sit here and we do things like build the website and do all sorts of research. And we do, do it all from here. Anyway, going back outside. Don't you love all this bouncing around? Yeah. So, people who tell you you need 10 kilowatts, they're full of shit. Alright? And I don't mean they're full of shit because they're idiots. It has nothing to do with it. They're full of shit because what they're focused on is perhaps things that have hung over from their old life. We don't go without anything. We've got a microwave in there, we've got a KitchenAid mixer, we've got a vacuum cleaner, 240 volt vacuum cleaner. We've got all sorts of stuff. All runs off that three kilowatt and a thousand amp hours. We have the ha little house which is standalone. Power can go out, LPG can run out, whoever, whomever inhabits that, maybe a family member, will be able to cook and they'll be able to stay warm within that little building. 12 volt pumps and the little solar panel on the roof that you can't see will provide that. The kitchen, again, lighting. You can see the panel up there. One 250 watt panel. Runs the battery, one battery, one 200 amp hour battery. And that runs a little pump and it runs the lighting within that building. Main house, everything mainly off the, off the three kilowatt system. A standalone, 200 watt panel runs things like the little evaporative cooler pump which is hiding way over there that little pump actually is the little black one on the right is just powering the water up to the evap cooler 12 volt 1.3 amps the bigger pump is only 230 amps 240 amps it powers the house and has no effect on the system the computer's running everything so look People ask, how much solar do you need? Well, I can tell you how much solar you need. We've got 3 kilowatts. Not 10 kilowatts. Not 25 grand worth. Not 45 grand worth. Not fucking 60 grand worth. We may have to think before we put the vacuum cleaner and one of my power saws on. We may have to make little decisions that are kept within the 3 kilowatt capacity of the system. That's the 3 kilowatt on the inverter. But pretty much we don't have much cause to jump over that 3 kilowatt limit. The limit isn't a restriction so much as a guide to make sure you're using power wisely. So anyone that tells you you need 5 kilowatt, 10 kilowatt, shit. The problem isn't the freaking kilowatts that they think they need. Anyone that says that to me, they have a problem and it's got nothing to do with 3 or 5 or 10 kilowatt. The problem is the power or the energy that they are requiring to survive. We have not only a small system that operates everything, but we have backup mechanisms in play that cost nothing but a little bit of firewood. And the entire project will not come to a grinding halt if we run out of LPG. 
we do not i'll show you the generators they're over here here we go look at that you want to see some generators there's one generator there's another one over there and there's a big ass honda that honda that's sitting there gathering dust seven kilowatt works like a charm but i gotta tell you I don't want to know about it. It eats fuel at the rate of about four litres an hour. Great for power production, but noisy as buggery, and you don't need to live with it. So if you want to lose all these generators, set your system up at a reasonable level, and then set your life up to set the, set the, the use that will fit within that system. And then you don't have to run a generator. A generator costs about two bucks, three bucks an hour to run, and that doesn't sound much, but do that day in, day out for you know 12 months and do the math. We're at the moment saving compared with how we used to live, probably about I don't know 80 hundred dollars a week, and I kid you not, that's not much in fuel when you're ch talking about seven to ten liters in a, in a fuel tank that only run, lasts a day. Do the math. Over the course of a year, you're spending a lot of money on petrol or diesel. Set your life up so that you can use the power that you have set up and use the power wisely so that you don't need to run the damn generator. We can run around and turn the light on. We can run any of the pumps. The pumps are running now. The VAP's running now. The wood, wood fires are there as soon as the weather turns a bit strange and a bit cold. And that's it. So that's all I wanted to say. Steve from OffTheGridNoz.com. Just do with energy requirements. Too many people think energy requirement is an issue that's probably a bit bigger than what it really is. The real problem with energy requirement is the people, not the system. The system can be very small, very marginal as far as what is considered to be normal. If you think that you need 5 kilowatt, don't worry about whether you can afford 5 kilowatt. Worry about what you're doing with that 5 kilowatt. Worry about how you're living your life. Maybe you don't need 5 kilowatt. That might take one huge slab of money off the requirement when you set up. If you can turn around and go, well, my solar is not going to cost 20,000, that's going to cost 10,000. That's 10 grand that can go into your building. It's 10 grand that can go into other stuff to make your daily life pleasant. So anyway, Steve from OffTheGridAndNoz.com. Subscribe below if you feel like it. Drop into the website, say hello if you feel like it. Plenty of stuff there to read. I'll leave you with that. Just don't go through life thinking you need 10 kilowatts. That is, and I'm going to swear, right? Listen to this. It's fucking bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. Anyone using 10 kilowatt, I won't watch their video. I just won't watch their video. That is just plain ridiculous. You do not need that to lead a normal life. You do not need that to power up everyday appliances. You just don't need it. And if you don't freaking believe me, send me a message. Don't post it up because I won't answer. Send me a message. And I may, if you're trusting, give you a phone call. You can live on three kilowatt. I can show you how to do it easily, cheaply, and then live within it. We do it. We've been doing it for seven months here, and we're eight years in this stuff nearly now. So don't think I don't know. We do know, and I do it all myself. You may have the money to pay someone to do it for you, but if you're going to pay someone to do it for you, maybe you don't need to spend all that money, all right? So cheers for now. And I'll leave it at that, and we'll catch you later and hopefully see you on the website. Bye.